USD 473 update on Eagle Community Television is brought to you by Branson and Chapman, professional entertainers from Branson, Missouri, performing in Chapman for you. Don and Mary Rickley, Coldwell Banker Maori Custer Realtors, supporting USD 473 and the families and communities keeping it alive. Carl Trucking, strong supporters of the USD 473 school system and all they do for our youth. KVK Incorporated Building Systems Management, providing quality service for all your residential and commercial heating and air conditioning needs. Mojo Music in downtown Chapman, Kansas, now offering lessons. Call or stop in today. Kohlhoff Pharmacy, your family-owned pharmacy, voted best pharmacy in the Flint Hills, offering free delivery to Chapman. Chapman Food Mart, Chapman Food Mart is your hometown market, supporting USD 473, its families, and the community. And Eagle Communications, our community connected. Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to another USD 473 update. Brand new location, Blue Ridge Elementary up here on 18 Highway with Luann Sparks, the principal. Good morning. Good morning. What a fantastic school to walk into this morning. This reminds me of my school. Uh, the same kind of floor in the gym, same kind of <laughs> baskets. It's just, uh, and that clock is just so cool. But uh, that's not what we're here to talk about, but I couldn't help myself. So you've got 87 kids attending a rural attendance center that uh, has a unique educational opportunity for them. Very much so. Yeah. Rural education is an area that is very unique. I think Kansas, the state of Kansas is very fortunate to still offer a rural school setting. It encompasses a lot of values and your community is a very strong backbone of what we do here. There's not many 87 person schools left in, no. uh, in the continental United States. I think that it's, it's such a uh, reminder of times when schools were awfully, awfully close mm -hmm. family organizations. Very much so, and very based on your agricultural needs. And, you know, we're out here in the country surrounded by fields that mm -hmm. raise wheat and corn and soybeans and all kinds of things. So I assume your kids come in on buses from this area around, in Blue, Ridge, around mm -hmm. Blue Ridge. So how far do you go? Do you pull kids from? 100% um, of our school population arrive by bus every day, and they also leave by bus every day. Um, we pick up children all the way up to the Gary County line. Okay. We will go over by Milford Lake. We cover um, North Talmadge area. Okay. Um, we cover Mil uh, Manchester and of course some of the areas heading towards Chapman as well. You have Enterprise. a pickup point at Zion Church I am betting because I think yes. I see your bus there in the morning. Very much so. We yeah. will go almost to 15. We go out by even Clay Center, close to Clay Center. That's a folks that, that don't maybe know where all those places are that are watching. That's a long ways to drive a bus at that circle. That's a lot of area. Most people are surprised as I was when I moved here that Chapman covers about 550 square miles. It's so a huge area. it's a very vast area, but mm -hmm. when you compare it to the 550, it's not as great as what mm -hmm. one might think. Mm -hmm. I had such a uh, I watched you this morning and we had a couple of lines of kids come through and you were able to call them by name. Mm -hmm. um, what a blessing both as an educator but, but to those children with that relationships mm -hmm. and you mentioned relationships are pretty important to education. Very much so. Um, the biggest key factor and the biggest difference an adult can make in the life of a child is based upon that relationship, time and relationship. And relationships are knowing your children. It's also knowing their families. It's knowing about that child and being invested in their life as well as them being invested in yours. I love the fact that I do know my students by name. I know their parents by name. and. I am thrilled to be in a smaller setting where if they need a Band-Aid, they don't hesitate to come <laughs> to me. Ms. Sparks, I need a Band-Aid, or can you help me with my zipper, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that yeah. because they see me as a, a caretaker for uh, them. That's, that's so much, again, 30 years ago, 40 years mm -hmm. ago, educational opportunities. 
uh, that I, my personal opinion is has largely been lost in big school environment. It's pretty hard to have that sort of closeness in a real big, big school. In the past 30 years, I worked in an elementary school that had 680 students in it. And now I'm in a school setting with 87 children. And I will tell you from my own experience that there's a huge difference. When you work with a smaller population, you know your children, you know your community, you know your families, and you're in touch with those needs. And it's, you work, I think, in a different dynamic than when you are working with 600 children and you have more students in and out. It's not that you can't develop those relationships, but the stability in a rural school is a key factor that really helps support kids. I think almost by definition, when you're talking one person, you, Luann Sparks, principal, uh, there are only so many people that you can have a relationship with in, in an eight hour day. I really is. I, you may know their names if you have exceptional memory, but having a relationship is more than knowing your name. Oh, absolutely, and it's knowing about them. It's going into classrooms. It's knowing um, what's going on in your classrooms. Mm -hmm. I just have one classroom per grade level, so when I go into kindergarten, I can tell you definitely what's going on in that kindergarten classroom versus my fifth grade classroom, and you work in a dynamic where our teachers really, they don't have a department, they don't have other grade levels, they have to really work together and they share duties, they share lunch periods, so the children are accountable to all the adults mm -hmm. and they see all the adults here as yeah, part of their team. That's a great training program for life, I think. <laughs> um, I just, just watched uh, out in the hall, you have some challenges as well. You have an occupational therapist here today who I recognize and said <laughs> hello to. So all part of the Abilene area family. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they were out uh, doing occupational therapy in the hall with some tennis balls, a therapist and student. And so that tells me there are some space issues here. Very much so, but we are certainly USD 473. We're working on those space issues. Last night we selected an architectural firm and we're working on expanding our kitchen and adding classroom space, bathrooms, and office. Very likely, you know, we're going to be stair-stepping it to mm -hmm. get through sure. those phases. Um, but we are keenly aware of those shortages. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is this is not a trick question, and it's not even a hard question, but it is one that helps people understand your values. Okay, so you talked about being in a 600 kid school. Mm -hmm. which I'm sure was very large yes. building-wise, probably had lots of room and probably did not have a 1950s nine time clock <laughs> in the gymnasium. So would you trade all the room in the world and all the facilities in a room in the world for your 87 child classrooms here? Absolutely, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, the space has advantages sure. and you don't want your students to ever feel limited because they don't have the space to do what needs to be done. Um, but on the flip side of that, um, I am definitely a fan of our neighborhood rural schools. Mm -hmm. I moved from a larger school system to a smaller school system and the quality of education is phenomenal. And I think you will find in the state of Kansas and certainly in Chapman, people make that education for our children. And it's not what comes from a textbook and it's not what comes from the yeah, walls. Yeah. It comes from what's inside those walls. And that's, that's based upon your staff and your people that work with kids. Very well said. I, uh, I, uh, last time we filmed a 473 update, we were in Chapman at the new elementary school up mm -hmm. on the hill. And I'd never been in a building. So before I arrived a little early, kind of like I did here today, and uh, Lacey Sell took me on a tour. <laughs> and we're just breezing in and out and she'd knock on the classroom door and in we would go. And, and when we got through, I said to her, I said, we never saw a single child or a single person that wasn't happy to see you today. They knew who you were. Absolutely. And that's remarkable. Um, and I will tell you that even though we are a rural school and we are outside of our city limits of Chapman, 
Uh, Ms. Sell can walk into any classroom and not only do our staff know who she is, but our children yeah. will know who she is yeah. and she knows about our students as yeah. well. Yeah. That's, and that's remarkable leadership and you know, I, I just enjoy the opportunity to see kid, people who love kids and more than that, willing to invest their talents with them. Very and much what so. What a great thing we have in rural Kansas. We have a lot of good people and uh, we have a great opportunity and the camera can't see it, but you and I are seeing probably what third, fourth graders. This is, these are second graders, second and we graders. have approximately 23 of them. And they're walking quietly behind us, so we don't interrupt the uh, interview. Um, those are lives that will forever either benefit or cost Kansas in productivity and happiness and wealth. All of those things are being formed here today. Very much so. Yeah. A lot of um, fine work takes place in most likely some of the most obsolete or forgotten places. Yeah, isn't that something? Uh, I just uh, think of uh, school. When I walked in here, I thought of my school. And you know, I'm 58, be 59 this summer, so it was a long time ago when I was in elementary school. But so many of the qualities is, of the education I was privileged to have are right here at Blue Ridge today. You can see it <laughs> when you see the adults and the kids together and the sizes of the numbers of people. Uh, I think you see it in the, the way the people were, the little ones were responding to you in the hallway <laughs> and to their teachers in the hallway. This is an intimate setting for education to grow. And we really are quite proud of our relationships with our children and we feel that um, when you are in those smaller settings that is certainly teaching a piece of that hidden curriculum that a textbook cannot touch. Right, <laughs> well said. Uh, this is K through? Five. K through five. Okay. Yes. And the sixth graders move on to? They all Chapman. move into Chapman okay. Middle School. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we have, most people are surprised to figure out that Chapman ha School District has four elementary schools that will feed into a middle school setting. Yeah, yeah it's pretty unique. I am, I am hoping that Lacey sends us to Enterprise and uh, <laughs> Rural Center. Ah, very good. I hope so, so it'll be fun. I hear they have great cinnamon rolls at Rural Center, so we're gonna try wow. to arrange maybe a cinnamon roll visit. That would be a well, <laughs> thought plan, I would think. <laughs> I would tell you that even in our rural schools, we still cook our lunches and our meals here too. And that is also a lot of places have moved to a central kitchen format. And mm -hmm. here in our smaller school settings, you take care of those needs here in our building. So we have all kinds of interesting cooking smells throughout the day yeah. and cinnamon yeah. rolls are oh not a goodness. day that we oh complain my about. Oh my goodness. And they make homemade granola, which I'll also bet it's somebody's good. mom working in the, <laughs> the kitchen here. It was always somebody's mom, you know, uh, pull from a small community. It has to be somebody's mom. And if it's not kitchen. a mom, it's an aunt yeah. or a grandmother. Okay. There's always, yes, right. everybody's yeah. kind of interconnected, and yeah. that's a great yeah. part of our small community. You know, people talk a lot about uh, community. Uh, we mm -hmm. talk a lot about community at Eagle. We, we have a vision of community for a company I think is extraordinary, but, you know, um, Sometimes we don't dig down, or us, all of us in society, we don't really take a often enough look at what community means. It means somebody's aunt, somebody's grandmother, and mm -hmm. then that little child right there in a relationship uh, with a teacher. That's, that, that's a great community and that, that has hope for tomorrow. Very much so. Yeah. So tell us uh, what's the most exciting thing between now and springtime you're going to do at Blue Ridge? Well, not the most exciting thing, but um, in the winter time right now, our children are getting ready for their spring state assessments. Okay. So that becomes a focal point, unfortunately, for our three, four, five. Mm -hmm. um, we are surviving the winter, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, children don't get to go outside and enjoy the, the outdoors as much. One thing that's a little bit unique with Blue Ridge is when you have rural children, they're used to being outside. They are. Our right. kids, they love outside. <laughs> so it's going to be a challenge a little more between here and there because our children want to be outside. These mm -hmm. are farm kids, yeah. a lot of them, and they're yeah. outdoor kids. Mm -hmm. And so outdoors is very important. Um, in the springtime, we will be 
ramping up and wrapping up our year. It's hard to imagine right now. We're already in the third quarter of school. Isn't it something? We're over halfway finished. And so um, the spring, every quarter brings a new challenge for us. So where on the state assessments do you check uh, relationship growth? Um, unfortunately, that's not one of our <laughs> hidden pieces that we're assessed on. Um, our children do exceptionally well. Blue Ridge is very unique. We've been the recipient of the Governor's I Award. I saw your awards out in the hall. Very much so. And considering that there have been some years that we have been in the top 10% out of all elementary schools in the state of Kansas, there are some pretty great instructional things going on here. And I think that goes back to the relationship, but it also goes to sound instructional yeah. practices. I, I uh, venturing opinions on this show quite frequently, and this is one. So <laughs> I think rural schools like uh, Blue Ridge prove uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, but nobody's looking behind the shadows on this one, that the link between poverty and educational outcomes is not quite as tight as the world thinks it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I looked at your kids walk by this morning, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that statement stands for itself. You stand, look at those awards, you look at the results you achieve here, mm -hmm. and it's uh, not very closely linked to poverty. Uh, edu educational outcomes are tied to the quality of the education process, maybe uh, more even so to the quality of the family experience in the home before they come to school. Uh, and, uh, but you're certainly proving that uh, it can be done. The biggest difference that I would state for Blue Ridge is the value and the expectation of our community. Mm -hmm. Our parents have expectations for our children. Mm -hmm. I have shared this story often with people and they're surprised as a building principal, but when I contact parents and I have to share with them, I visited with your child today about mm -hmm. a concern. Mm -hmm. I have parents that, Miss Sparks, I'm so sorry that you had to talk to my child. And that really comes from, that comes from our moms and dads and our grandparents that are raising children. They have an expectation and they have high expectations for their children. They want them to be capable adults and they want them to be respectful and responsible adults. And when I tell principals, I have parents that apologize to me for visiting with their children. You know, I never thought, I, I thought those days were gone in education, and they're not. They're still very much alive in our rural community. I, I would uh, say that's very hopeful, right? Would I find disagree? it very, absolutely, and, I, and it, makes your, it makes everyone's job easier, but when you see success on the level that we have here at Blue Ridge, I really have to commend not only our staff, but that's from our parents as well. I would agree. I think that hope is something that's not often enough given credit for. You know, the reason those parents respond to you in that way about expectations is they have great hope for their children. Mm -hmm. They have dreams for their children that are based on a reality of performance equals some measure of what you're going to get out of the world. And, uh, but I think rural Kansas is blessed with a, with a spirit of hope uh, of betterment for the next generation. And you see it represented in these public institutions that we call schools. Very much so. Yeah. Okay, so one other thing. We have to think <laughs> of an interesting question here as Lacey oh walks out there behind <laughs> us. Or she might not let me come back. So here's an interesting question. How long have you been in education? 30 years. 30 years. So in your 30 years of education, have you found a place where the relationships are closer, the people more closely aligned as in teamwork, and the, and the outcomes with the ones in your charge better than Blue Ridge? I have never worked in a place with the value system and the follow through and the respect and the value system as I have in Chapman. And I, it has been a refreshing part of my career to be here. Well, then this is my personal plug for um, what I think about this is um, uh, you're to be commended. I'll shake your hand Thank on camera you. because you're a leader. <laughs> Th this environment does not come without leadership. It doesn't. Um, the, the inspiration that's going on here and are set by the leaders 
and that uh, that certainly uh, as a principal of this facility you bear that weight so well done good and thank faithful you servant. thank you yeah so glad to be here today uh, uh, we're getting ready to wrap the program up uh, it was an exciting time to watch the water run through the fields this morning There's water <laughs> running everywhere on our way to blue ridge this morning so we know that's going to make the wheat grow the corn grow the beans grow and you're going to make sure that the kids of Blue Ridge grow to be the students and the citizens that uh, we all want them to be. Absolutely. Luann Sparks, so good to see you and meet you. Nice Thanks to see us with here you today. today. At Blue Ridge Elementary, our USD 473 update. Another one's in the books. <laughs> Folks, we know you enjoy seeing what's going on in your local schools, and we're so happy to bring it to you for Eagle Communications. I'm Dennis Weiss. This is Luann Sparks. Have a great day. USD 473 update on Eagle Community Television is brought to you by Branson and Chapman, professional entertainers from Branson, Missouri, performing in Chapman for you. Don and Mary Rickley, Coldwell Banker Maori Custer Realtors, supporting USD 473 and the families and communities keeping it alive. Carl Trucking, strong supporters of the USD 473 school system and all they do for our youth. KVK Incorporated Building Systems Management, providing quality service for all your residential and commercial heating and air conditioning needs. Mojo Music in downtown Chapman, Kansas, now offering lessons. Call or stop in today. Kohlhoff Pharmacy, your family-owned pharmacy, voted best pharmacy in the Flint Hills, offering free delivery to Chapman. Chapman Food Mart, Chapman Food Mart is your hometown market, supporting USD 473, its families, and the community and Eagle Communications, our community connected.